this video will cover the organelles. Organelles, its definition, the different important organelles, and in the end we'll talk a little bit about cell division, how one cell produces the other cells, that's called reproduction or cell division. So let's begin with uh, introduction to organelles. So if you look at this cell, this is a cell with different organelles. Whatever is there inside the cell, in the cytoplasm, which has got a specific function, the area or the structure which performs specific function is known as organelle. Organelle is exactly similar to organ. So in human or in animal or in plants, different parts, different organs perform specific functions. Similarly, inside the cell, different organelles, they perform specific functions. So organelles could be either membrane bound structures, it could be single layer or double layer membrane, or they can be non-membrane bound structures. So there are membrane bound organelles and non-membrane bound organelles. Now your book, CBSC year 9 book mainly mentions about membrane bound organelles. Membrane bound organelles, as the name suggests, they are cellular structures which are bound by a membrane. It's a biological membrane. It could be single or double layer and it is made up of lipids but with interspersed protein molecules into that. So it is made up of lipids and proteins. And the examples which we are going to look in following slides, these are nucleus. We already talked about nucleus in video number two. We are going to see endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, mitochondria, plastids, which are there in plant cells, not in animal cells, lysosomes and vacuoles. And non-membrane bound organelles, they are cytoplasmic structures, the areas, which do not have membrane covering, but they carry out specific functions for the cell, such as flagellum, ribosomes, nucleus, nucleolus, nucleosum, centrioles, and cytoskeleton. And there are different other non-membrane bound organelles present in the cytoplasm, but you don't need to remember for your exam purpose. So let's go through them one by one. What do the organelles do in different cells? And as I said, let me remind you, in certain cells, they are bound by membranes and in other cells, they are not bound by membranes. And in eukaryotic cells, such as human, plant or animal cells, there are both membrane bound and non-membrane bound organelles. So eukaryotic cells have got both membrane bound and non-bound organelles, whereas prokaryotic cells have no membrane for their organelles. Let's go through very important organelle that is endoplasmic reticulum. In short, it's ER. So what is ER? ER is a system of tubes and flat sheets. So these flat sheets are organized in the form of vesicles or cisterns. So it's a complex system, interconnected system of tubes and shit. The membrane of endoplasmic reticulum is similar in structure to plasma membrane. Remember the plasma membrane or cell membrane bounds the cell and we have cell wall outside in plant cells but not in animal cells. So there are two types of endoplasmic reticulum structures and they are based on how they look based on their structure and the function they perform. So rough endoplasmic, endoplasmic reticulum under microscope as the name suggests, it looks rough. And what gives it a rough appearance? So there are particles called as ribosomes. And these ribosomes are attached on the wall of rough endoplasmic reticulum. What do they do? They synthesize, manufacture or produce proteins so ribosomes are protein factories of endoplasmic reticulum or of cell. And smooth endoplasmic reticulum, 
does not have ribosomes attached so it appears smooth in under microscope what does the smooth endoplasmic reticulum do it manufactures fat molecules so these fat and protein molecules are used for membrane biogenesis biogenesis means production synthesis making of membranes and they also work as enzymes and hormones as well and the endoplasmic reticulum tubes and sheets they act as transport channels for material from one part of the cell to the other part of the cell from endoplasmic reticulum to the nucleus from one organelle of the cell to the other organelle of the cell so it's a transport system and because it's an extensive wide area of the tubes and sheets provided by endoplasmic reticulum this wide surface area provides as a surface platform for various biochemical reactions which take place inside the cell so these are the benefits of endoplasmic reticulum these are the functions of the endoplasmic reticulum now certain mammalian or vertebrate liver cells have smooth endoplasmic reticulum which performs specific functions these are because of the chemical reactions which take on their surfaces example the liver cells which are called as hepatocytes the endoplasmic reticulum in them performs a chemical reaction which detoxifies many poisons and drugs drug means medicines so detoxification is it breaks it down makes it into simple pro products simple molecules breaks it down into non poisonous simple molecules that is detoxification is a very important function of liver and that is because of the endoplasmic reticulum of the hepatocyte cells now next important organelle is golgi apparatus or golgi body it is attached with the endoplasmic reticulum system and along with endoplasmic reticulum system it forms a complex system it forms a part of a complex cellular membrane systems together with endoplasmic reticulum and what is golgi apparatus it is a membrane bound vesicles placed parallel to each other in the form of a stack and it is a stack of vesicles or flat sacs they are also called as cisterns cistern is a word for storage bags storage tanks so they are flat storage tanks arranged parallel to each other you can see in this slide so these storage sacs are called as vesicles also called as cisterns so you will see this cistern word in biology in zoology in botany also in human medicine so there are various systems in human bodies that is a storage tank for liquid material water or fluid material inside the living organism now what do they do what is the function of the golgi apparatus so the function is in association with endoplasmic reticulum so material which is synthesized in endoplasmic reticulum is packaged and dispatched to various target organs inside the cell so it is a packaging and dispatch uh, factory of the cell it also stores various products synthesized in the cell it can modify them and then package for ready made use for other organelles in some cases golgi apparatus can make complex sugar molecules using simple sugar molecules so synthesizing a complex sugar is also a function of golgi apparatus and it is also involved in formation of lysosomes which is another organelle we'll see next so that is golgi apparatus but let me tell you more details of the person the scientist the doctor who actually invented whose name has been given to this golgi apparatus and this doctor was camillo golgi he was born in 1843 that is 19th century and he studied medicine 
at University of Pavia. And after his graduation in 1965, he started working in the hospital in Pavia, that is Hospital of St. Matteo. And at that time, he used to study nervous system, but he was made chief medical officer of the hospital, which used to care for patients with long-term illness, that is chronically sick patients. And in that new hospital, he started working in the hospital kitchen. He started doing his research. And what research did he do? He started inventing the new techniques to observe the nerve cell function and structures. And he uh, invented his own technique to make the nerve cell structure clear and that was called as black reaction. What did it involve? It involved using weak solution of silver nitrate and then using this silver nitrate solution, he used to study the various processes inside the cell and various parts and subparts of the cell, that is ramifications of cell. So throughout life, he kept working and kept studying the cell structure into details. And this technique was known as black reaction. But later on, this technique came to known as Golgi reaction or Golgi method. This scientist, Camilo Golgi, was awarded with highest award. He received Nobel Prize in Medicine in 1906 along with another scientist known as Santiago Romoni Cajal and this was the scientist who also studied the structure of nervous system. Understand the spelling of this scientist name is C-A-J-A-L but the pronunciation is Cajal and he was the Nobel joint Nobel Prize winner in 1906 for medicine for studying the structure and function of nervous system. So you can see in this diagram, there are uh, cell structures which can be visualized, which can be made clear using Golgi stain or Golgi method, which originally Camilo Golgi had invented. The next organelle is lysosome. So as I said, Golgi apparatus, Golgi body gives rise to lysosomes. What is lysosome? These are membrane bound sacs and they are filled with digestive enzymes. So this is the digestive and waste disposal system. Understand lysosomes are membrane bound sacs. They have digestive enzymes in them. So they digest various structures, including foreign material, as well as the worn out cell organelles, which are damaged and they cannot be repaired. And those structures of the cells are also digested into the lysosomes. That's why it is also a waste disposal system of the cell. How do lysosomes break these structures? So they are broken by various digestive enzymes and they can break down the complex molecules into simple molecules. So this organic material in living cell is broken down into simpler structures and the cell then gets rid of them now, these digestive enzymes are quite dangerous. If by some defect or injury or metabolic problem of the cell, if the lysosome membrane breaks, the enzymes inside the lysosome can enter into the cytoplasm and they can start digesting the organelles of the cell itself and the cell can be destroyed. That is why lysosomes are also called as suicide bags of the cell. So understand lysosomes are digestive and waste disposal systems of the cell. The next structure I will take you through is mitochondria. And it's a very, very important structure. Remember two words in relation to mitochondria. One is powerhouse. The mitochondria is a powerhouse of the cell. And second word I want you to remember is an energy currency. So ATP, which is produced inside the mitochondria is the energy currency of the cell. So mitochondria has got two layers, the outer layer, which has got pores, that is holes in it, and the inner layer. The inner layer 
falls on itself and it generates a very massive surface area because of this folds and this surface area because of the inner folds is used by mitochondria for various chemical reactions and this chemical reactions give rise to energy that is ATP adenosine triphosphate now ATP is a combination of adenosine diphosphate and high energy phosphate bond so this high energy phosphate bond is broken down when ATP is used and that energy is used to run various reactions in the body as well as to generate the moments in for the body so it's a very important structure in the body so inside the cell there is a nucleus which has got a DNA of the cell but in the same cell there is a mitochondria which contains its own DNA and ribosome so it can produce its own proteins and it can produce lots of independent chemical reactions because it, it has got its own DNA and ribosome. So that's about mitochondria. Very important structure. It helps in production of energy in the form of ATP. It also helps in regulation of immunity. The, because of the large surface area and involvement in chemical reactions, it keeps the balance of the calcium in the cell. It also involves in cell death and renewal of the body. That process is called as autophagy. That is very important process which happens in every animal and plant cell. And the mitochondria are also important in stem cell regulation. You don't need to remember all these functions, but that's something important for your competitive exams when you appear for them in future. So that was about mitochondria. Now, very interesting organelle of plant cell that is plastids. Now, plastid is only present in plant cells and your ninth CBSC book mentions two types of plastids. But in fact, there are many more other types and I'll show you the other types in next slide. But for your exam purpose, there are two types of plastids, chromoplasts, chrome means color. So they have, they are colored plastids and others are leucoplasts. So leuca is in relation to white. So they are either white or colorless plastids, chromoplasts and leucoplasts, two types of plastids. Chromoplasts, which contain the pigment chlorophyll are called as chloroplasts so remember the chloroplast is a plastid and it is involved in photosynthesis reaction of plant cells and it also has got the chloroplast also has got yellow and orange pigments now leucoplasts which is a white or colorless plastid mainly functions as a storage organ and it stores starch, oils and protein granules. So dif different functions for chromoplast, chloroplast and leucoplast. And the internal organization of the chloroplast is very similar to mitochondria. So it has got the outer membrane and it has got the inner membrane which is thrown into various folds creating a large surface area for various chemical reactions. And this inner membrane folds are embedded in the material called as stroma. Plastids similar to mitochondria also have their own DNA and their own ribosomes. So they perform a lot of independent functions though they are part of the cell and they are one of the organelles in the cell but because of their own DNA and ribosomes they are important structures and they can do a lot of independent activity inside the cell. And there are various other plastid types. So uh, I don't think they are important for you for year nine, but maybe in your future exams, they can be uh, of importance. So they, they these different plastids, they perform different functions. And that's why they have different types of pigments or different chemicals inside them. So various uh, plastids, you can pause the video and have a look at these plastids. And if you're not worried of your exam at the moment, you can just skip through. Next organelle we want to go through is vacuoles. Vacuole 
is the name given for storage sac and what it stores is a solid or liquid content inside the cell so in small sized animals and in plants the vacuoles have a large size the central vacuole of some plant cell can be as big as up to the size of 50 to 90 percent of the cell volume so the majority of the cell is vacuole storage of different solid and liquid material inside the cell in plant cells the vacuoles are full of cell sap and they provide turgidity and rigidity to the cell many substances are stored in vacuoles such as amino acids sugars various organic acids and proteins so it's basically like a cupboard storage uh, area storage organelle of the cell now in single cell organisms like amoeba the, there are specific food vacuoles they only contain food item which amoeba consumes by endocytosis and in some unicellular organisms there are specific vacuoles which help in expelling the extra water and the waste material from inside of the cell to the outside so vacuole is a storage organ it can act as a food storage and it can act as a uh, organ to expel excess of water and waste material from the cell of some unicellular organisms so that was about vacuoles now let's go through a process of cell division briefly now what is cell division one cell gives rise to two or more different cells that is called as cell division and what is the importance of cell division this is important to grow it's important to repair the body cells which die or get injured so you need to replace these cells or repair the injured cells and also it's important to regenerate another organism that is in the form of sperms or ovum and they are called as gametes we'll see that in brief so cell division can be either mitosis or meiosis and what is meaning of mitosis mitosis is where before one cell gets converted into two daughter cells that is offsprings so mother cell is converted into offsprings the chromosomes inside the cell they duplicate so one set of chromosome converted into two sets of chromosome and these sets go into the daughter cells so example in human cells the chromosome number is 46 and that mother cell with 46 chromosome is called as diploid cell that is converted in by mitosis into two cells with 46 chromosome each so chromosome number duplicates this is called as mitosis and this process is very common it's used for growth and repair of the body now meiosis is slightly complicated process there is meiosis one and meiosis two and these two steps convert one cell into four daughter cells that is four offsprings and these four offsprings daughter cells are called as gametes and this takes place in testicles and in ovum of animals and this also takes place in plants so there are female gametes and male gametes produced which have only got one set of chromosomes so in human beings 46 chromosome mother cell gives rise to four daughter cells that is four gametes with only 23 chromosomes each that is after two steps of meiosis so why does the number reduce to half it's simple because during fertilization one female gamete with half the number unites with one male gamete with second half number and these two half chromosome numbers unite and the zygote and embryo which is produced after that has got full set that is 46 chromosomes that why that's why it has to reduce to half so that after fertilization the number goes back to double and that's about cell division which is very important phenomena without which 
we will not be able to be born we won't be able to grow and there won't be any repair and regeneration of our body cells if cell division does not take place so guys i hope uh, this three videos have covered the cell topic for your level i'm sure for higher levels when year 10 11 12 there will be more in-depth study of the cell structure and function but for your level at year 9 i hope i have been able to cover uh, the important aspects of the cell and if you like this video don't forget to like the video itself so press the like button and share it to your friends and if you think someone else will get benefited do share the link with them as well and stay connected by subscribing the channel because i'm going to post more such educational videos on this channel so everyone can get benefited enjoy take care bye bye